this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Wake up. Time to die. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Charlie. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. I'm on, Dad. You're so fast, too. Don't fuck with the babysitter. We came, we saw, we kicked it ass. Swing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bueller. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Oh, oh. What are you looking at, Spothead? Fucking Chuck Norris. Great Scott, my dog is heavy. You just gotta keep living, man. L I V I N. Cinema Royale. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Hello, and welcome to Cinema Royale After Dark, where we talk about movies at night. I'm your host, Scooter Mike, also known as MJ White Wolf. Along with me are my special movie aficionados who are going to talk about movies with me. Uh, first up is James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Tude. Uh, tonight's broadcast is brought to you by... Uh, Smash has been cancelled. I'm pissed off and I blame you guys for it. Because you didn't watch it. That was a good show, yo. You really like musicals. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Yeah, I agree. And, and, uh, my, my name is... Uh, <laughs> and and, uh, and last but not our least. other co-host here... And my other co-host is a guest, of course, because Matt and or Morgan cannot make it tonight. So instead, we have Brandon Nichols, also known as the Hardcore Kid. Hey, what's going on here? What's going on with you, Mike? James? Hey, James! That's an interesting uh, profile pic you got in there. Whoa, you got some lipstick on there or what? Actually, no, I just finished eating a lollipop. <laughs> uh, who's that cussing man on your icon there, huh? For us? <laughs> oh, that, that's my buddy. They call him Jim Cornette. He, he's a manager. Helps me out with my wrestling matches. I, I was a wrestler. I beat a lot of guys up, you know? You ever beat anybody over six foot four? Yeah. Yeah, the guy was a total skinny, skin, skinny guy though. That hasn't eaten anything uh, all night. He eats nothing but raw eggs. Yeah, well, I'm not. Yeah, you're a bum. Big fat bum. Anyways, this episode. Yeah, no, no, no. You, 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 you don't put that any much. So, okay, so go on. what's going on? Anyway. Like... Anyways, what are we talking about tonight? Tonight's episode is going to be about sliced Stallone films. Yes, the actor known for his speech impediment and his action films. So we're going to dedicate this episode to the actor himself, Sly. Hey. So, who is uh, It's a dedication for the living because he is still among us. Yes. Maybe he's an old guy. He's in his 60s, but he can still go. Exactly. Yeah, he's absolutely. He's uh, he's still he's not just still making movies, but he's still making action movies, oh, and he still he still seems to have a a persona going. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Uh, so I know. Uh, he's uh, he has been known for starring in a lot of really shitty movies. Um, I think. Uh, in the Raspberry Awards, he actually won the award for worst actor of the century. What? Yeah. Uh, which century exactly? Because we're twentieth century. Okay, because he, he he wasn't there for the entirety of that one, and That's for half of it. Well, let me quote. Uh, Not even his career. Well, he has won ten awards from the Razzies that he won so far. Are the worst actor of '85 for *Rhinestone*. Uh, worst actor. No comment there. Worst actor of '86 for both *Rambo: First Blood* Part Two and *Rocky IV*. 
Uh, see I really where... think that's bullshit that he would even that he would even get a uh, that because uh, you know as a despite what people may say about like Ram- Rambo: First Blood Part Two or Rocky Four, th- th- those movies have cult fo- and Rocky Four they have cult followings. You know, oh. I mean, I'm probably one of the few people who actually are. Th- you what do you, what do you guys think of Rocky Four? I love Rocky Four personally. It's one of my favorite Rocky movies, actually. Yeah, I must break you. I, I love Dolph. And I really like the Dolph I really like the, uh, the music, the, the musical score. The, that kind of, that kind of movie is actually like whenever whenever I was about to go to uh, I was about to have a wrestling match in high school, and the night before uh, I rem- I recall Rocky Four was actually on, and um, I was downstairs in my gym working out, and Rocky Four Four was playing on the. Uh, television screen and uh, when they have the montage uh, playing with uh, the music playing uh, who did uh, the, the score for Rocky 4 again uh, it was it was uh, Vince DiCola yes Vince DiCola yes that's what it was I also made the Transformer the soundtrack for Transformers the movie mm-hmm. real good soundtrack Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. Uh, uh, that's the fun thing about Rocky IV is that it's uh, is that its training montage actually poses a semi-educational vibe. Yeah, it's actually uh, pumped. It, it's actually quite uh, well. Here's the thing that I learned from it: it's actually quite common for for boxers to go up to high altitude. Areas and train. Yeah. Because of let's the go to, effects. Let's start. Let's climb that big mountain. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, because the one when you when you train your body harder in low oxygen or thin oxygen areas, your body takes a your body takes a toll a lot harder. Trust me, I was in Lake Tahoe this past uh, this past winter, and I tried to. I was at the arcade and I I tried a boxing game, and I got myself on video doing this. But man, like, uh, the air is thin in Lake Tahoe, so you, uh, my my shoulders from that one, you know, a twenty minute session boxing, or even fake boxing, they were sore the next week. Jinx. Wow. Um, that's yeah. Well, that that's a that that it builds character. Sore, no no pain, no gain. Remember that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Rocky for doing the Rocky does that in the what is that the the Swiss Alps or? It was Russia. It was Russia. Russia. Well, the funny thing about that is it, the... it it it's Russia in the movie, but I think they filmed it in Canada. Ah. <laughs> that's that's the, the fact I uh, know. Of course, it's it's hilarious. I was like, really? You couldn't go to Russia, but you went to Canada up north to film the winter scenes. Well, you gotta love movie. That's movie a lot for you. Hey, you got a shorter commute. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and I was I was gonna say there's uh, he also won the worst director of '86 for Rocky IV, so. Uh, he also won the worst screenplay of a nineteen eighty worst screenplay of nineteen eighty six with James Cameron and Kevin Gerard for uh, Rambo F- First Blood Part Two. Uh, let's see, worst actor of eighty nine for Rambo Three. Worst actor of the decade nineteen eighties. Rambo Three. Yeah, Rambo Three. Son of a bitch. Uh, where's uh, act- here's the thing. The only problem, the only problem I have with Rambo: First Blood Part Two, when uh, it's all, it, it's all a fine, you know, standard shoot 'em up movie, but, but when here's the, something that they seem to have forgotten: when a helicopter fires missiles, they actually fire missiles. Holy shit! Yes, they don't fire. They don't fire squibs, and then oh, and just have random explosions go off from the impact point. They actually fire missiles. No, well, they try to make it as realistic as possible. <laughs> exactly. Of course, nowadays everybody's got us. Uh, they use like 
CGI and, and random pyrotechnics and stuff. Yeah, of yeah we're spoiled today. <laughs> yeah. Um. What else did he won for the Razzies? Oh, he won Worst Actor of 1993 for Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. That that movie was uh, for that he definitely deserved that. That movie was a piece of shit. It, it was. What it was, was that? A Golden Girl that he shot that with? Yeah. It was. Oh, was it was that... Estelle, Estelle Getty. Oh, it was Estelle Getty. Yes. Yeah. God damn. It was the oldest Golden Girl. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, worst screen couple of 1995 with Sharon Stone and The Specialist. Uh, Never heard of it. Oh, and yes, Brandon was right. Worst actor of the century. And <laughs> and worst supporting actor of 2004 for Spy Kids 3D Game Over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, ironically, was the best film in the franchise. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I kind of have, I kind of have uh, uh, a guilty pleasure for like some of the Spy the Spy Kids movies. I mean, they're not particularly good, but y- you still kind of enjoy them in a way. Like I kind of had fun with the Spy. I li- I kind of liked Spy Kids three. I mean, yeah, yes, it's a piece of junk, and I don't like three D, but I still thought it was it was a little fun with the uh, video game aspect. Yeah, it, it was. was uh, it 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 was fun because of two reasons. One, Stallone <laughs> overacting in every in every possible way that he can. Mm-hmm. And uh, two, uh, when you've got this was the first instance I've ever seen of a movie saying when you've got 3D, screw everything else. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're good. Just just make a movie. Uh, uh, it was so yeah. bad it was good. Yep, it's one of those movies. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like the first two, I knew they, I knew they were trying, and I, I, I just didn't get into them as much. Yeah. So. The yeah, that uh, that uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl movie though, that's unacceptable. Uh, don't. But yeah. We're, but we're going, but we're going uh, off top. I was gonna still going to talk about the movies, oh. <laughs> and not talk about uh, crappy movies. movies. Worst movies ever made. Um, we were we were going. For, actually, I was like, "What the hell is wrong with me?" Okay. So, how did Rocky go from being a uh, an Academy Award uh, winning series to a Razzie nominated series? I think it really all depends on on um, how. I think. think uh, um, like with the original Rocky, it started out as a very humble picture, and um, it's just about a guy living in Philadelphia who, who, uh, who boxes at clubs and just and gets a big shot. And um, the sequ- the sequel again is sort of like that, and it's just Rocky getting another chance and dealing with similar situations. Um, around the time when Rocky Three came out, that's when uh, things just started to get, get random and over the top. And uh, it's, for, uh, it's because of the the film's transition from the '70s to the '80s. I mean, um, you know, a lot of things changed in the '80s. Music changed in the '80s. Some bands came out with new ways of changing their sound. And uh, and in a way, it's like it's like the, the movies uh, c- kind of tried to change their way. Um, like Rocky Three tried to be a lot more fun and crazy and ridiculous. And then it went poured over into Rocky four. And then when when Rocky five came along, it it just, just got too ridiculous and too stupid. Rocky four had a robot. Uh Exactly. And I'm a robot guy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. We've all seen your channel. (laughs) (laughs) Well aware of that. Um, 
the robot the robot got, got a Razzie nomination too, didn't it? Ah, uh, I don't the know. The robot got a Razzie nomination. I yeah. I never heard of that. But um, he lost to the Daleks. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh my god, that was funny. Um, um, last time we talked about comic book movies, and Stallone was in the movie known as Judge Dredd, which is based off a comic book movie. Based off a comic book. Yeah. I mean, I am the law. I, I still want to see that movie. I don't care what anybody says about how cheesy it is or whatever, or how poorly it might have done. But I seriously want to see that because I have more recently seen Dread 3D. Yeah, how was it? How was that? Uh, well, if you like uh, people getting uh, high and shot in slow motion, uh, this is the movie for you. Um, but it, uh, that, that yeah, it it kind of it it missed out on the the heroism aspect. Well, I, I think I the have it on DVD, so I'm a quite a big fan of it. Actually, I mean, it's a gritty, darker image of Judge Dredd, and it's the way it's supposed to be based do, on the comics. Do you think? Oh, okay. Well, did you uh, find that the the sidekick character was uh, a more interesting character than Dredd himself? Because I sure did. Uh, more or less. I mean, the sidekick character was pretty interesting because she was a mutant slash sidekick. So, I mean, she would have been fleshed out in the sequel if there was a sequel. But, I mean, Dredd, he's a badass. I mean, he's got that deep voice and he's just ready to kick some ass. Okay, but who's seen the uh, the Stallone Judge Dredd? I mean, I, 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 I have not fully seen the movie. I actually seen like reviews of it, like such as the Nostalgia Critic review of it. And I mean, first off, he takes his helmet off, which it's never been done before. I mean, why would you? With the character of Dredd, he's never supposed to take his helmet off. In the comics, you know, when he does take his helmet off, he's censored in the comics. So why did they take? The, the helmet off it just didn't make any sense to me that, that's the aspect of that besides it's like oh Stallone's Judge Dredd let's just take the helmet off and you, you can see his full face because we know who the actor is uh, Stallone needs FaceTime it's in his contract <laughs> yeah the, the more your face is on screen the more money you make that's what they tell me um, yeah it's something like that but in the in the Stallone dread, uh, there was a sort of a sidekick in that one, wasn't it? Like Rob Schneider. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of didn't like Rob Schneider in it. He was very unnecessary in that movie. Yeah. Uh, he probably got good props. Uh... He probably got good props uh, from Stallone after Demolition Man. That's a get the role. Ah. Uh, um. What That's what I'm guessing. Could be. Uh, I'm just trying to think of. So. Uh, what was I gonna? Oh, there's some. Uh, go on. You were thinking. There's a. Here's a fact of trivia for you. Stallone turned down the part of John McClane in Die Hard. Uh, uh, <laughs> so in well, the role- okay. I, I, I still think uh, Bruce Willis w- would make a better John McClane than uh, Sly. I, I, I just think it, he, he's a small guy. He's a smaller guy. He's not as built, but he does have that. Uh, 
that kind of charisma to it. Yeah, I agree. I just that was just and, something and interesting. The, the, the look, he's, he's got he's got the the style, the voice, the attitude. I, I think he's a good John McClane for it. Yeah. John McClane for president. Yeah, so I I would have voted for him. Oh, if he were real. <laughs> here's a here's another fact of trivia. Uh, he was Joe Schumacher's second choice to play Mister Freeze in Batman and Robin. You know, I think that would have been more tolerable than Arnold. <laughs> Even though we oh just... Oh my goodness, I just found a loophole. What, what loophole? Uh, Slice Matt and Cometh. Kick some, mo- kick some mice. So they were both... Con- both Stallone and Schwarzenegger were considered for the same role as uh, <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Uh... And yet, in a previous, in a previous Schwarzenegger movie, Stallone replaced Schwarzenegger in a famous role of his. You guys know what movie I'm talking about? Mm. Oh, I'm trying. Oh, I don't know. Okay. In the last action hero. Stallone replaces Schwarzenegger in that movie's universe's version of the Terminator. Oh, that's right. That little Easter egg in the movie. That was pretty cool. I totally mm-hmm. totally forgot about that. Yeah, so there you go. You learn something new every yeah. day. Um I was gonna say, I've there's there's one movie I've seen, and it's actually got a little bit of history behind it. Um, have you guys seen Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy? I've seen the original. Yeah, I have. Okay, that movie was originally intended to be a Stallone film, a serious action film called Beverly Hills Cop. Well, it's, apparently Stallone didn't. The deal didn't oh, work everybody, out. Everybody was really in that that fly shoes with these action movies, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, so apparently something went wrong with the deal between the the movie. I guess the script was not what Stallone wanted, I guess. He, he had his own ideas he wanted to put into the script, and the, the director was like, I don't want that. So it was scrapped, but they, t- they uh, catered the... Uh, script to Eddie Murphy like it was a comedy movie and and Eddie Murphy improvised for most of his lines. Now, the movie that Stallone was pitching to the director actually turned out to be the movie known as Cobra that came out in 86. And it's a serious movie where he is this hardcore lieutenant cop named Cobra, Crobetti. And he has to protect this girl because she witnessed a crime against this biker gang. And it's got cheesy one-liners, and it's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, Cobra, I have yet to see that, but I've heard many great things or oh, it, bad things about it. It's it's uh, how would I put this? It's cheesy. It's kind of cheesy to a point. It's it's because there's there's a one liner in the movie that's like at the beginning, and cheesy. he's he says, "You're the disease, and I'm the cure." <laughs> and he just kills him. Just like you're the you're the disease and I'm the cure. Bang. Mm-hmm. Um I am the cure. I am the cure. So the first time I saw Stallone's film that uh, pretty much all the way through that was uh Enough to make an impact on me was actually Demolition Man. Oh, yeah, Demolition Man. 
I've seen bits and pieces of it. Which that movie? Yeah. Which I I had never seen anything like it before. Uh, let's see, it was I just turned ten. I think I I had never seen anything like this before, and I I gotta say I uh, it was a a good blend of science fiction action and comedy and uh, i didn't know who the i didn't know uh who many of the actors were but i went on to you know recognize them in later projects stallone i figured out who he was wesley snipes and uh i think i went back to that to that movie after years of not seeing it and enjoyed it enjoyed it even more for it all of its all of its cheesiness i mean if you want a good if you want a a good cheesy uh stallone action film that's that's one that i do recommend what if you don't want a cheesy stallone film <laughs> Uh, that uh, that will be harder because those are tough to come by. Well, you, well um, for, for First Blood, you really uh, I, it, it's occasionally over the top, but some sometimes it does have a very uh, I don't know, a bit of a downtone to it. Like at the beginning, uh, John Rambo re- really seems like you, you see him. He seems like this very down to earth dude. He looks like he, he like. You know he's gonna go. He's gonna go uh, crazy and and get into this whole thing with the cops. But and then at the end, you actually feel bad for him when he starts crying. And stuff. I, I thought it. Yeah, I thought First Blood worked because they they had a very strong point that they were trying to make with that movie, and it was not just. Uh, no, it wasn't just all there for for action for the sake of seeing somebody blow somebody else up or shoot somebody else. Yeah. It was uh, it was it it was trying to to make a statement to how uh, to how poorly uh, the veterans were treated after yeah. after Vietnam. Vietnam. And I don't know about how how poorly the the cops might have might have uh, treated the veterans, but I do know a lot of the people, a lot of the so-called peace-loving types, had a very uh, negative uh, skew against the veterans. They treated them very poorly, and uh, it. Um, but that, to me, was right when the mo- that, right when the movie uh, steps over the line and says, "Okay, this is going too far." What manages it? What manages to tie it up is that is that one you know speech that Rambo does at the end. Exactly. Yeah, so these movies, uh, as, as crazy as they are, they all, they always seem to have some kind of message behind them. Sometimes it's a stupid message, or sometimes it, it's a very it's a very moral one. Like, uh, like in, in a way, uh, um, like with the Rocky movie, it's. You, you know, you know, Rocky tra- trained hard to uh, to uh, get, go go for the ti- for the title shot and get the match with Apollo Creed, but um, he and even though he didn't win, he, he still he still did, did his best. He, he he went the distance. That, that's the that's that's the big uh, message behind uh, Rocky, and that's going the distance, being able to last uh, the entire match with uh, one of the greatest uh, box in the world <laughs> I will find my way I can go the distance <laughs> uh, 
I had to do it. So you did. Yeah. So Stallone started out. All right, I should talk about how he, his first acting role was. He was 23 when he got his first starring role in the soft corn po- porno known as had the, to go to this. the Party at Kitty and Studs. Oh, but it, and Stallion. <laughs> yeah, it was re- re-released and renamed Jesus. as the Italian Stallion after a success with Rocky, in which he played the role of Stud the Italian Stallion. He was paid $200 to play the sex-craved gigolo and appeared nude. So, he got his acting career yeah. sort of started off with a soft corn porno. In 1970. That sucks. That's really going to ruin your reputation. <laughs> that, that's a rough... And uh, I mean, here's the funny thing. Mm-hmm. He's a uh, Roman Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you gotta start somewhere. Derp, derp. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe he converted to Catholicism after that happened, or because because when you watch, actually, when you watch um, uh, the Rocky movies, there seems to be a heavy emphasis on on the uh, the local culture that in which Rocky lives and they're all you know he's surrounded by Catholics mm. so there seems to be a an emphasis on that huh. so I can I don't know maybe there's another message in there mm. <laughs> but mm. uh, uh, Yes, convert to Catholicism, and you will be able to cleanse your soul of a porno you made. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Here's one, Death Race 2000. I was just going to mention remember that? I was gonna, just going to mention I've heard that. I've it, but I've never actually seen it. It's an it's a, it's a awesome Roger Corman-produced film. Death Race 2. He made an awesome movie? Yeah, Roger Ro- Corman did. Oh yeah, he produced. He's, he's this is a this is a Roger Corman produced film. He produced it. Wait, he actually produced an awesome movie. I I love Roger Corman, don't you? <laughs> don't you? Don't you think his movies I mean, I, are cheesily awesome? I I think. Well, I think. I, I, I have watched uh, I have watched a few of them and uh, I, I wouldn't say that they're I wouldn't say that they're awesome but I, they're 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 enjoyable a lot of them just enjoyable B movies yeah well maybe I shouldn't say talking awesome about Roger Corman uh, Godfather Part 2 we're talking about Roger Corman as in the original Fantastic Four movie. Oh. Yeah, that Roger Corman. Wow. Uh, <laughs> anyways, Death Race 2000 yeah, Death is... Death Race 2000. Ag- I saw it the first time I came across this movie, it was... Go on. Yeah, go, go on. It's your word. Okay. Um, Death Race 2000 is a title I accidentally stumbled across for the first time searching iTunes and it was under the Disney movie section. What? Why don't they put it Disney movie section? What? Yeah. How the heck Idiots. Does, how does a cult film from 1975 end up in the Disney file? Uh, well, let's see. Let's see now. Where can I find it? Um, I'm looking at uh, I'm I'm gonna look in. I'm gonna look in the iTunes store again and see if they've correctly uh, categorized it now. Uh, but while I do that, uh, you can go on and do your spiel about Death Race. Um, yeah, Death Race 2000 is a interesting film. I mean, it's a great concept, by the way. It's 
Um, and Death Race 2000 is a little bit different than the remake. I mean, I, I've... Tell you the truth, I know the premise because I've seen the remake. And it's just about the same with the, the original. But this time in the original, it's, it's an alternate timeline in the late 70s. It's pretty much about in the future... It's like a futuristic kind of thing where it's a post-apocalypse and the major event is a death race. And it's a race to death. And you get these vehicles and cars that go crazy and then you it's like speed racer kind of you know with the cr- contraptions and in my opinion speed racer was underrated definitely yeah totally actually i kind of the uh, picture i i kind of picture um uh death race is the original super mario kart <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. I actually agree. That that should be your selling point if you want to go see Death Race. It's just like Mario Kart. Only a lot less friendly. Yes, a lot less. Uh, the, I can, go ahead. I think I just created a great concept for a robot chicken spoof. What's <laughs> like that? <laughs> oh, yes, Mario Kart. Describe and describe. Mario Kart Death Race. Mario Kart Death Race. I think they did something like that, didn't they? Didn't they do like a Death Race parody or something? Uh. uh no, they've done done a lot of car crash shit. I think I, I I remember a Mario Kart parody where they think they. What was it? Oh, they go to um. They go to the Grand Theft Auto, like Vice City or something. <laughs> That's what it was. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a class. Yeah, that, that was. That was my fair skip. But, but anyways, with Death Race 2000, it's, in my opinion, it's a cheesy, great cult film. If you're starting to get into Roger Corman's produced films, and so, so, uh, Sly plays a like supporting character as Machine Gun Joe and. He has machine guns in his car. He shoots up people. Nice. And does he have to? Does he have to roll over a question mark in order to get that that <laughs> skill? Or no? A- well, actually. Or uh, maybe does he? Uh... Wait, no. Like I said, I've not seen the original, but in the remake of Death Race. They actually, um, in order to get their power ups for their guns, they have to roll over like a uh, a emblem of the weapon. So they have, they have to drive over it to get their weapons, kind of thing. It's it's like Mario. Here's a better idea. Maybe he should go ahead. Oh, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, it's like Mario Kart in the remake. It's like you have to roll over it and they get their weapons or their shields. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's like, uh, or maybe maybe he gets his, pow- his, uh, his power up uh, by, this, by this black van that pulls out in the middle of the road. You know, he drives up into the back of the van, they outfit him and <laughs> pop him out again. Suddenly so he's got a I know what you're referencing. That's suddenly nice. he's got a machine gun, you know. Yeah, that's that's a nice reference there. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> um, well, I was gonna say, and Sylvester Stallone has done another cheesy '80s film, which he can—he's the only one that could do it. Over the top. Which is pretty much the arm wrestling movie. <laughs> a movie all about arm wrestling. It's about arm wrestling. Yeah, who? It's all in that one right arm. Working mm-hmm. the hands, work, working those, working those forearms, working those, those, uh, those wrists, trying to. Oh yeah. Yeah, th- this arm. Yeah, I, I I like to do it with one arm, you know. 
working it with one arm with the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, over the top is pretty much about a yeah, long Yeah, so we get, it's about driver. as bare bones masculine as it can get. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's got a plot to it, at least, at least, because Stallone plays a, a long-haul truck driver who tries to win back his alienated son while becoming a champion arm wrestler. Hey, kid, I'm going to win this for you. I want to win your love back. Okay, that was bad. After doing impressions. After doing impressions again. But Over the Top was ew, was nominated three times for the Raspi Award in winning both. Oh, for the director? No, never mind. It was Sly Sloan was nominated for the worst actor in the movie, but he didn't win it. Uh-huh. Also, uh, the yes, uh, then the. Uh... The kid get a nomination for worst supporting actor. Probably, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. So, um, so he also directed a couple of films as well, including his own films. You know, uh, like The Expendables Rock- and uh, Rock- Rocky Balboa. And uh, he directed Rocky Four and Rocky Two. But the one of the weirdest ones I've noticed that he directed was the sequel to Saturday Night Fever titled Staying Alive. Oh, that one sucked. <laughs> I'm surprised they actually directed that uh, movie. Oh, co written as well. Well, he co written the movie start somewhere, right? and directed it. And it was Stopped. in ni- 1983. And it bombed. And John Travolta went under, but Stallone went over. So, I mean, this is the only. Film... I guess someone got the last laugh. Maybe it was. Maybe it was a strategy. <laughs> Could Maybe be. Stallone had a secret career strategy. He just said, "I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill off this uh, this guy's career." And uh, and I'm gonna go out and make all these Rocky movies because I'm really really popular right now. And uh, it'll be stuck with uh, two of a kind and look who's talking by the end of the by the end of the <laughs> decade. There. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, the Staying Alive is the only film to date which Sly has written. He does not star in, although he does have an uncredited cameo in the movie. Have a guess? What's the cameo? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> the cameo? He, he plays as Man in Street. <laughs> Man in Street. No... No name for the character, just the man in the street. Oh. That's that's an uncredited cameo. <laughs> just like a brief appearance on the street. Well, there was a guy. Is that and the Razzie Award for <laughs> and the Razzie Award for worst supporting actor goes to Sylvester Stallone for Man in the Street. <laughs> yes, it was a stunning one-liner. <laughs> oh man. Uh Trying to see other films that he'd done and trying to All see. All right, so I'm gonna Let's see. Uh, uh, what do we got? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to talk about as much Rocky. I mean, <laughs> still, still little films. Da, 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 da. What was that? I was gonna. Hmm. I 
Oh, uh, here's some trivia. Here's a little bit of trivia about Sly. Well, if we've got a lull in the conversation. <laughs> I know, it's weird. It's like this is the first time we ever yes, ever. Yes, go on. As I was saying, there's a little bit of trivia. At 15, his classmates voted him the one most likely to end up in the electric chair. Um, ouch. ouch. I mean, what? And the... why was that? Just I don't... Cause he was a... I don't know what he was doing in school, but the classmates are like, eh, he's most likely to end up in an electric chair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Um. Hmm. Interesting. No, not interesting. Horrifying. Horrifying, indeed. Sylvester Stallone was in a buddy cop film also known as Tango and Cash. Yeah, that's with uh, Kurt Russell. It was Kurt Russell. Any good? Uh, Uh, It was. It was. It was. It was. It was okay. I think it's. But I, it, I wasn't too big on it. Yeah, well, it just got a lot of negativity, and it was also given a uh, nomination for a Razzie Award as well for worst actor and worst supporting actress. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. Nominations for worst supporting actress, which is Kurt Russell and Drag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll vote for the most random crap. That, 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 that's very specific. Like, uh, like uh, they actually, like uh, uh, Adam Sandler actually won the uh, award for worst supporting actress for him dressing up as Jill and Jack and Jill. Oh, I oh, guess. Good. <laughs> God, that was interesting. Um, um, uh-huh. what do I to conclude? Because I think we're at a conversation here. I think we've talked the majority of Saloon films. <laughs> I think that's it. That's well, it. I gotta, I I gotta, I got a semi-ethical uh, talking point here to propose. Um, we forgot to mention the movie Bullet to the Head. I yes. Never heard of that. Yeah, he. That's his. Uh, that was the most recent, huh? most recent film by Sly that came out earlier this year. I've heard of it. Oh, no wonder I've never heard. Oh, I know what it is now. Yes, this uh, this film was directed by uh, Walter Hill. Starred Stallone, of course. Looked rather interesting. Looked like it could be a a fun little action movie, but. There was actually uh, an organized effort against it, seeing as uh, some uh, uh, some of Stallone's uh, previous skeletons in the closet came back to haunt him. Um, in the, the 90s, uh, Stallone was uh, outside of acting, outside of acting, of course. Uh, was on a, a huge anti-gun streak. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I don't know uh, if you guys uh, are aware of this, but I've actually got a bunch of quotes here from Stallone uh, from back in the 90s. And uh, one of them from 1998 says, the Second Amendment has to be stopped and someone really has to go on the line a certain dotless political figure and say it's ending, it's over, all bets are off. It's not 200 years ago, we don't need this anymore, and the rest of the world doesn't have it, why should we? So, given his his, his personal stance on, on guns, how do you think that reflects the films that he makes? Is this hypocrisy, or is there... Yeah, it does seem kind of bizarre, since he's been in a lot of movies where he's where he's carrying guns and shooting stuff. I mean, I mean, like with the Expendables, there was like explosions and 
shootings and guns and all kinds of crap in this. Yeah. Well, not just shooting, but, you know, shooting shooting off-body oh. parts, even. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about you, Ryan? Look, look, at, look, at Ram- look at Rambo, the latest uh, Rambo movie. You, that, that, that was one of the bloodiest uh, sh- shootouts in, uh, in cinema history. Well, at least until Django Unchained came along. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. I wonder if Quentin Tarantino is going to come out as anti-gun next. Oh, boy. I, I doubt it. No. But, but that's interesting. What about you, Mike? That's an interesting point, because why would he come out with that, even though most of his films feature a gun and just all, all of a sudden be like anti gun? It's like you're an action film star. You got to have a gun somehow. Why? I, I, it just baffles me. Mm hmm. Well. Uh, here's a here's a quote to, to go on and try, uh, I suppose, to further explain explain himself. He says, uh, "I know we use guns in films, but the time has come to be a little more accountable and realize that this is an escalating problem that's eventually going to lead to, I think, urban warfare." And by that, he was. Uh, referring to inner city violence, and uh, uh, that's that's the uh, I guess the, the argument behind why he's against the Second Amendment. Uh, um, yeah, I'm just don't even know what to say about that. And uh, I. Yeah, crazy. I, I think it's maybe 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 he doesn't want want to influence anybody just to get a gun and start shooting people up. Too late. Uh yeah, because we had we had the Aurora, Colorado shootings and the, the school shootings at uh, Sandy. Yeah. Sandy Sandy Hook. Well, Sandy Hook. Well, the. Uh, the the situation between that uh, uh, those are the, those are the the kinds of people who I personally think uh, are the reason are the reason why people why perfectly sane law-abiding citizens own guns to begin with uh, some do it for protection uh, they're 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 scared of people in this world. Yeah, what they what they don't what they, they talked about the Aurora, Colorado shooting for a long time because that was a a travesty and it and it was it was a it was a horrifying event but it uh, uh, what they didn't tell you was that not too long after that happened um, uh, somebody else tried the same thing and they were stopped by an audience member who. Uh, was uh, a cop off duty who brought a gun into the theater? Yeah. No. Uh, ju- ju- just recently, uh, the the, uh, the, sh- the shooter of the Aurora, Co- Colorado shooting. Um, uh, they just recently uh, they uh, labeled him as insane, no, legally shit. insane. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that they so now he has a right to uh, uh, plead innocent while being uh, legally insane or some weird crap like that. Okay, so before we even discuss whether or not the Second Amendment should apply or whether or not you know Stallone has a uh, uh, has any privilege to to criticize the Second Amendment, first we got to fix the other messed up things in our legal system. Starting with that. But anyway, mm. I, I thought, I, I just thought that the the Second Amendment uh, 
quotes would be would be uh, an interesting talking point because we are discussing we are discussing a, a very popular actor whose whose films have had a lot of gun violence and whose personal statements uh, seem to seem to indicate that he has another attitude. So that's why I wanted to bring it up during this podcast. I know we don't usually do politics in here, but it was just an interesting notion to talk about. Uh, yeah, I'm not a po- I'm not a politics guy. Yeah, me either. It's yeah. not that's not why I started this podcast. Yeah, I talk po- about politics. Everybody knows politics are full of shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about movies. We're talking about Sylvester Stallone. We're not talking about uh, all this political garbage. Exactly. Well, <laughs> technically, technically, remember, uh, First Blood is a political film. Way to tie yeah. that. On account t- of, uh, like we said, the message before, how uh, how veterans were treated. Yeah, way to tie that back in. That's pretty awesome. Way to tie that together. I snuck it in. You snuck in there with that. It's cool. Um, there. He's yes, got. It was a. Uh, I brought my ticking time bond in here. <laughs> uh, I noticed that Sylvester Sloan has three upcoming movies coming out uh one called okay Ex- one called escape plan which is coming out he has upcoming movies that are coming out yeah he's got three of them coming out one this year and two next year he's still working his ass off in the business Correct. Uh, so he's gonna be in Escape Plan, which is formerly known as Escape Plan. Okay, and I and see. Two, he's starring with Arnold Schwarzenegger and, again, uh, Grudge Match, which is actually... Grudge Match is actually a, a sports comedy where he's uh, going to be boxing with Robert De Niro. Uh... <laughs> That's going to be hilarious. So it's... It's kind of cool because Stallone and De Niro were both in successful boxing films such as Rocky and Raging Bull. Um, Reach Me and Reach Me. Speaking of which, I was at at Chiller Expo and I actually got an autograph from the real Raging Bull. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so if you if you love Sly, watch out for his upcoming films. And we've got uh, the Expendables three. Yeah, yes. I, I saw the first Expendables. Uh, I enjoy. I enjoyed. I still haven't seen Expendables two yet. And from what I've heard, people say it's better than the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You... Well, with the Expendables. Uh, uh, it, 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 like it, it pays tribute to all the cheesy uh, cheesiness of '80s action movies that all these guys have uh, come and done, mm-hmm. with all the explosions and all the weird dialogue and such. Okay, Mr. Dartboard Man, what's our next topic? <laughs> um, so the next episode we're gonna talk about Nicolas Cage films. So. So, uh, thanks for listening to Cinema Royale. Oh, boy. That's going to be fun. I know. I know. The bees. <sighs> oh, my God. The bees. The bees. Oh, my God. The bees. <laughs> so. Alrighty. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. See you in two weeks since this is a bi- weekly podcast. Signing out. Peace out, guys. Ciao for now. Peace out. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit.